Hello everybody, my name is Reza Dorani and uh, today we will be talking about delegation with Power Apps and SharePoint as a data source. So as you can see, in this case, I have a Power App that I've created based on a SharePoint list of students. And if I play this app, this is listing out all the students from my SharePoint list. And uh, I have a filter on top where I can search based on the name of the student. Now, this app was created directly from the SharePoint list by going to the list of students and then by creating the Power App directly by selecting Create an App. So this is a standalone app that was created. Now, if I go back to my Power App, obviously I've made a few uh, modifications in the look and feel for the gallery just to make it look a little more nice. And uh, as you can see, the gallery is listing the name of the student, the class the student belongs to, the region the student is associated with, and of course, the uh, enrollment date uh, defined in the SharePoint list. Now, the concept of this demo will be to showcase uh, delegation. So if I go to the site contents and, and if you look at students list, we have 295 items in the students list. And within the students list, if we look at the different types of columns we have, we have subjects, which is a choice field. And if I click on this column, we have four subjects here. And uh, within these subjects, if you notice, uh, it's, it's a uh, multi-select choice field. So this is a multi-select choice field for subjects. There is a column called active that is of type yes, no. Additionally, we have a region column. This is a single select uh, dropdown of options. It's not multi-select. So I'm trying to create all different types of uh, columns that are possible. Another one is called class. This is a lookup to another list in the site called class. And I'm looking up to the title column of that list. Okay, so again, very simple, straightforward. This is just a very simple lookup. And uh, we also have a couple of other fields that I created. One is called manager, which is a people picker field. And uh, another one called enrolled date, which is a date and time field. So basically we've, we've covered all the types of fields. And as you can see, this is my user database. Title has the name of the student. Subject is the multi-select option, so the student can pick multiple subjects. Uh, active is whether the student is active or not. Uh, region is defining the region. It's a single select choice. Class is again a single select choice. Uh, manager is the person or group field, single select in this case. And uh, enrollment date, which is a date and time field. Now, so that's the premise, right? And we also have a, another list called class that I created that just has the list of classes. So now if we head back to the app, right? Now, what is delegation, first of all? Now, as you can see, in this case, uh, by default, the browse gallery has a um, has an option here, has, a, has the items property that says, filter the list of students where the title property starts with the text value that is entered in the search box. So that's the filter criteria that has been defined. That's why when I search for the name of a student, if you note, it was starts with. So if I was to, so uh, if I was to search for uh, a particular last name, for example, in this case, let's say Drake's, right? So if I was to search for Drake's, you see it won't get me the results because the query says starts with and it does not say uh, contain. So if I, if, I was, I, if I was to search for this user, for example, I would have to give the exact starting letters of the title. Again, case insensitive, but that is something that I would have to do. So. Getting back to, just to explain what the query is, the default query. Now, to understand delegation first, let's understand how many items from the backend data source is this returning. So we know we have 295 items in the SharePoint list. And uh, if you go to file, and if you go to app settings and advanced settings, 
By default, if you notice, there's this setting right on top which says data row limit for non-delegable queries. And by default, this limit is 500. It's set to 500. What this limit specifies is when Power Apps is querying a data source or getting data from a data source, does it delegate the job of fetching the information or querying the information to the data source or does Power App has to do it itself? If Power Apps had to do it within the context of the app, in that case, it can only work with 500 items. That's the default limit. If you have a delegation warning based on the query that you have defined, okay? If you do not have a delegation warning, then in that case, this delegation limit does not apply and Power Apps will fetch all the data based on the limitations of the backend data source. In this case, our backend data source is SharePoint, okay? Now, if you note, my SharePoint list has 295 items and this delegation limit is above that. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna change my delegation limit to 200, okay? So I've just changed, or in fact, let's, let's change this to 50. So I'm just setting my delegation limit right now to 50. That means if there is any query that Power Apps is performing with respect to SharePoint as a data source, and if the query is not delegable, in that case, Power Apps can only work with 50 records. That's it. Also, when I say 50 records, in this case, if you notice, I also put the ID, which is the, uh, which is the inbuilt ID column in SharePoint. If I was to query this data source and if I had a delegation warning and uh, if I say, uh, get me details where a uh, student class is class three, we have a student here that's sitting in ID number 55. If I query this data source, because my delegation limit is 50 and if I get a delegation warning, it will, Power Apps will only work with the first 50 records. So what Power Apps does is it first loads all the data and then it will perform the query on it. So it's not like 50 is the number of items returned after the query. It actually goes and checks, it first loads the first set of delegable records that it has and then it works on it. And we will see all of this in action right now because I'm gonna create scenarios wherein we see all of this. So I've set my delegation limit to 50. Again, by default it's 500 and you can take this up to 2000. You cannot go beyond that. That's the highest limit you can set. So in this case, getting it back to 50, I'm gonna go back. So now my delegation is limit is 50. And as you can see, I don't have any delegation warning. If I go to filter and if I go to formulas, I'm sorry, if I, if I, look, at, if, if I, if I look at it right here, if I have a delegation warning, it will show up out here. Also, you will see a little exclamation mark out here highlighting that there's a delegation warning. In this case, there is no delegation warning, okay? Now, now that we've done this, right, we've, we've done this, let's first understand that this query right now starts with is a query that's going out to SharePoint as a data source, and this is a non, uh, this is not, uh, this is a delegable operation. Now, how do I know that this is a delegable operation? Starts with. So if you go to docs.microsoft.com and if you go to uh, the Canvas Apps components and if you, uh, the Canvas Apps piece, and if you go to delegation, there's this very nice article explaining about delegable data sources. And within this, if you notice, there are the three main data sources here, Common Data Service, SharePoint, and SQL. This video is all about SharePoint, so let's just focus on SharePoint. So I'm gonna go to SharePoint. And in this case, if you notice, these are all the functions that are delegable. Okay, and based on the type of the columns as well. For example, right, starts with. Starts with is delegable with text fields. It says yes, that means it is delegable. That means we won't run into the 50 item delegation limit. And complex data types, which are lookups and choice fields, even those are delegable if I use starts with. That's a yes, right? Now let's take another example, right? If you notice the search function is not here, that means if I try to use the search function, I will run into a delegation warning and we will look into all of this. So that means current, currently the app in question which is using starts with to query the title field which is of type text, I am not gonna get a delegation warning and that is true because when I head over to the app, I don't get a delegation warning. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert a label out here and this label is gonna show us the count of items in this gallery, okay? 
So here's browse gallery one. I'm gonna do count rows of browse gallery dot all items. So this will give us a count, okay? Now if you notice, I am querying the entire data source. It just says 100. Why is it 100, right? There is no delegation warning. My delegation limit was 50, but the gallery only fetched 100 records. Why? That's because the gallery in Power Apps is optimized. So as you start scrolling it, and once you cross 100, it will load the next 100 items. So as you can see, as I keep scrolling, it will keep loading the next set of items. And this, this number, which shows, the, which shows the item count in the gallery, this will keep loading as well. This will keep changing and it will keep adding rows to it. Okay, so here's back to the gallery. Let's, sh uh, let's show the scroll bar and let's play this app. So now if you notice, if I go right to the bottom, right? Uh, let's also put the ID column in here so we can So let's say class three is a, we're gonna also add the ID of, so we're gonna do this item dot ID, okay? And as you can see, if I, let's, and let us sort this by, um, we're gonna sort this by the ID column, okay? So I've changed the sort, sorting it by the ID column, and uh, this should load, so here you go. As you can see, it's one all the way through 100, right? And you see, it loaded the next set. As I scroll down, it loaded the next set, right? If you notice here, this went to 200. And if I scroll down, it will now load the next set of 100 items. So you see you see on the top, the loader is running. So here you go, it's loaded all the 295 items. So the gallery is very optimized and it's very smart. So it loads items in batches of hundreds. However, this is also a delegable operation. So that means even though it has loaded 100, and let's go and reload 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reset the gallery. So it goes back and resets again, and it loads only 100 items, right? Right now it's only showing me 100 items from one to 100. It's only loaded 100 items in the context of Power Apps. But, but let's say I wanna search for a student that is sitting at position 140. So let me search for the word Larry, L-A-R-E-E. -E. So if I head back here and if I play the app, although Larry is sitting at a position that is beyond 100, it because the query is delegable, it will go and fetch the data. So that's what delegation is. It's delegating the work to the backend data source. And because I'm not getting a warning, I am good, even though, even though the delegable limit for my app was set to just 50, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. So now instead of using uh, starts with title, uh, the title starts with this, what we are going to do is we are gonna change this up, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna use search. So we're gonna say search students, okay? Where the column, where, where this text, which is text box search one dot text is in title, okay? So now what I've done is I've just changed the query to a search query which says search the students uh, list where the text that's, that's been entered and uh, search it in the column title. So this is like a contains operation, okay? Now the first thing if you notice, you get this blue, blue line error out here which says delegation warning the search part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. That's because we have a delegation warning. If I go to the app checker and if I go to formulas, you see there's a warning out here and clearly says it's a delegation warning. It's a warning, it is not an error. It's just letting you know that Power Apps will only work with this data source with, lim with respect to the delegation. Now, if you notice, I've searched for the word Larry, right? It's the same search. The items returned is zero. Now, why is this zero, right? The student is sitting at position 140. The delegation limit was 50. That means search will only be able to search now in the first 50 items because my delegation limit is 50. If you had set it to 500, 500. Maximum you can set 2000. That means you cannot work with large data sets, data sets that span beyond 2000. So now if I was to search for a student within the first 50 items, for example, let's search for Tess. If I go back and if I search for Tess, you will notice it actually pulled it. Why? Because Power Apps is first loading the first 50 records and then doing the search operation on it based on the delegable operation. 
So this is very, very important to understand what delegation truly means and how do you get around delegation. It's very, very important to know which formulas are delegable. So it's not just the formulas, it's also the formulas and the types of columns that you're dealing with in SharePoint. Currently, number fields are delegable with a lot of operations. As you can see, text, also a lot of them. Uh, Boolean is also delegable. Complex types very recently have been made delegable. So prior to this, uh, if you had a choice field or if you had a lookup field, those were not delegable operations with, with most of the formulas. Luckily, they are delegable now. Uh, they are not yet delegable with sorting. So you need to understand which ones are delegable and which ones are not. After this, I will be creating additional videos to talk about how to handle delegation for the different types of columns. So stay tuned for my other video, other videos that are going to be coming up on delegation. But this is the first video that I wanted to showcase around delegation and highlight what delegation is and why is it so important to understand uh, delegation. Very, very important. Okay, so delegation is what Power Apps can do if your query is not delegable. And that's why this very important limit that you need to be aware of. And secondly, even after you handle delegation. So for example, let's say I have a list that has 50,000 records. Okay, I have a list that has 50,000 records and I'm using a delegable query, right? Great, that means Power Apps should be able to search in all those 50,000 records. That is true as long as your data source can handle it, right? Now, as most of you guys know, SharePoint has another limit, which is the 5,000 item limit. So let's say in Power Apps, if I have to, let's say the student's list was a student database of 50,000 records. And if I want to search for the title where the student name starts with a particular name of a student that is sitting at position number 50,000 in this list. Now, if I need to query that because I'm using a delegable query, Power Apps is fine. Power Apps will delegate the operation to SharePoint. But guess what? In SharePoint, there is also the limit of 5,000 items because SharePoint has its own limitations. So how do you work around the 5,000 item limit in SharePoint is we need to go to list settings and you need to go to column indexing, indexed columns. Okay, so if you go to indexed columns, you can create up to 20 indexes here. So if I have a student database that spans beyond 5,000, I know this list is gonna grow, right? I should be in that, in that case, what I should be doing is I should be creating indexes for all the different types of columns that I would be filtering or sorting on in Power Apps, right? So in this case, if I go back to my app, I have a very simple case where I'm searching based on the title property. Obviously search is not a delegable operation, first of all. So this is not gonna work. I have to change this back to starts with, right? So I need to go to filter. I need to do starts with because starts with is a delegable function and uh, title starts with the text that has been entered in the text box. So in this case, okay. So in this case, I don't have a delegable, uh, uh, I don't have a delegation issue, but, but, if my student database was beyond 50,000 and if I was to make this query, I would run into issues because SharePoint has a delegation limit of 5,000. Now the good thing about modern SharePoint is at the back end, it automatically creates indexes for you based on the filter queries you are making. But if you're building enterprise grade apps with Power Apps, especially working with large data sets, you need to be aware of the limitations of your data source. So in case of SharePoint, if I know that this list is gonna grow beyond 5,000, then in that case, what I can do is I can come here and I can make title as an indexed column. That way I have no issues of querying data in SharePoint that spans beyond the 5,000 item limit. Okay, so you need to be very, very careful of this. Two more pro tips related to indexing in uh, SharePoint. As you can see, you can only create a maximum of 20 uh, indexes, so you need to be very sure of which columns you're filtering and sorting on in Power Apps, that's number one. Number two, once your item count hits 20,000, you cannot create indexes and you cannot delete indexes. So that means, let's say I have a list today and I'm just filtering on a couple of columns and I've created two indexes, great. 
the list grows, goes beyond 20,000. And then I decide, oh, I want to create a third index because I want to filter or sort on a new, new column type. In that case, it will not work because your column indexes has gone beyond, I'm sorry, because your item count has gone beyond 20,000. So you need to be aware of that fact. In that case, what you would have to do is write a PowerShell script to move the items out. You have to lower your items below 20,000 so you can add indexes or you can delete indexes. So that was uh, the first, uh, this is my first video now on delegation and I plan to add some uh, future videos that will be coming. Those will be short ones on delegation for each and every column type in uh, SharePoint. Okay. Thank you so much for watching.